Hi everyone, this is Dion Davidson of Beadly Speaking Jewelry. Welcome back to our channel. We are so excited to have you um, join us week after week. I'm a little under the weather this week. The weather's been so awesome here in Baltimore. We haven't had a real winter, thank God. We've had a few cold days, but lately it's been really warm. And um, we're grateful for that. So thank you again for joining us. This week's topic is um, lupus and depression. Become your own superhero. So I'm going to dive into this topic head on because a lot of times we um, waste so much time in the beginning when we're first diagnosed by being in a slump because we don't know the proper channels. And I think I went through that to help somebody. So I'm going to bless somebody, get out of their funk and get into get back into life. Um, lupus is not something that's designed to kill you. It may be a real struggle right now, but I'm here to tell you after three, almost four years of living with it, that there is another side. It's another side of through where you can um, get your life back. As a matter of fact, I didn't even get my life back. I'm getting something better. So don't be bitter. I'm going to help you get better. I'm not a therapist. Um, I'm not licensed in that area. I'm just sharing with you tips that have worked for me. And the first tip I want to share with you is actually to see a therapist. Because that's what helped me. Um, I strongly suggest that you speak to somebody who is qualified, trained, and certified in the area of talk therapy. I'm not talking about somebody who's just going to give you some pills and send you on your way. That does not work. Um, been there, done that, still miserable with, you know, was still I was still miserable with uh, medication and no talk. So you need somebody who's going to listen and help you design a plan that's going to change your life. But you have to be willing to do the work. The good book says, faith without works is dead. So not only are you going to somebody for help, but you got to be prepared to do the work. So once you go see a therapist, somebody that's going to design a plan for you, now you have to work the plan. All right. So that's part of your healing. It's part of your growth process. Now, the next part is to join a support group um, or visit one. I found it very helpful attending um, the lupus support group. I went a few Tuesday evenings uh, to one here in Baltimore. It's once a month, um, and the good thing is it's once a month, so it's no big-time commitment of having to go to a weekly thing. And it's no requirement, it's no fees attached to it. But being around people who understand what you're going through um, there's no judgment. Everything is confidential. You can share as much or as little as you want to. If you go and you don't feel like you want to share anything, then don't. But being in the atmosphere where people understand you and they don't question what you're feeling, um, that actually helped me a lot in the beginning. So that's something that you might want to look into. There are, there are online groups um, as well, there are a few Facebook groups that I joined in the beginning that were pretty helpful. And I met some people who um, were living with lupus a lot longer than I, than I was at the time. And they were able to share things that work for them. And again, some of it is not going to be beneficial to you. So you decide what works for you. Um, the next thing is you got to move. I know it's painful to get up and do something, especially when the pain is just from your head to your pinky toe. But design a plan, set a goal for yourself. I was diagnosed in October, 2013. And my goal was simply to walk one block. So by March, my birthday was in March. By March, all I wanted to do was walk one block. There was a mass on my right lung my liver and my kidneys were failing. And all the pain from my head to my toes, everything was hurting so bad. All I wanted to do was walk one block. But just getting up and down the steps, I was winded. Just really weak and exhausted, like I ran a marathon. But still, my goal was to do one block. So I had my eyes set on that one block. 
It's like, I'm coming for you. I'm coming for you. And one day, um, close to my birthday, I looked out the door and I looked at the end of the block and I said, I'm going to do it. I know I'm going to do it by my birthday. And the day came and I walked to the end of the block and I was so excited. I started crying when I got to the end of the block. I was so joyful. Those were joyful tears. And then I thought about it. I was like, wait, how I'm getting back? Because I'm tired as I don't know what. <laughs> I could laugh at it now because I didn't have a plan all the way through. I knew I was going to walk to the end of that block. But I didn't have a plan on how to get back to the house. <laughs> I just knew I was going to get to the end of the block, not get back home. Nobody was going to come and pick me up. So I had to become my own superhero. Become your own hero, your own superhero. Batman ain't coming. Superwoman ain't coming. Spider-Man ain't coming. None of them ain't coming. You got to become your own hero. So I walk my little cute self right on back to the house. And as exhausted as I was, I did it. So you got to move. Set small goals. Don't make it so enormous that you get frustrated. Something small. Start there. So move a little bit at a time. Now I'm up to walking four miles fast pace. I'll be getting it. And my goal is to walk five miles. So by the time it warms up completely, I know I can do five miles around the track. And eventually my goal is to jog five miles. So I'm walking four now with brisk walking. So I know I can jog at least a mile soon. I ain't going to tell you all my goals soon. <laughs> but the goal is to be able to move. Even though it hurts some days and I'm just really out of it, I still move. Um, depression will set in where some days I can't even get out of bed. And if I'm in bed for two and three days, I start to feel frustrated. And, you know, I start feeling sorry for myself. I'm with you. I know what that feels like. But... At that point, I'm like, all right, I got to do something. Maybe I need to go up and down the steps. Maybe at a very, very slow pace, but I need to move. Because the longer I sit, the more my joints hurt. So that's one thing I've learned. Move. Um, find a hobby, something that you like to do that takes your mind off the pain. For me, I've been making jewelry for so long that it's not even like fun when I'm not feeling well. So... The latest thing I've been doing is like not even bead work, but wire work because that helps me to exercise my hands. So what I started doing was playing with wire whenever I wasn't feeling well. So I don't know if you can see this. This is just me playing with wire. And now I have earrings to prove it. Just playing with, this is hard wire, 12 gauge hard wire. And I actually cut the wire and bend it. And bend it into these shapes, these spirals that you see. These didn't come like that. These were just regular old wire. And I bend it into different shapes. I also learned how to paint. I didn't know anything about painting. Um, one of my buddies, Ellen G, suggested for my birthday a few years ago. I think it might have been 2014. That... Um, I was like, I need something to do for my birthday, something different. And she suggested a paint party. And I called up Miss Cleatrice at Art by Cleatrice. And she has a studio on 1400 Warner Street. So I called Miss Cleatrice and scheduled a party. I didn't know anything how to paint. I just copied the painting off the wall. She helped me step by step to paint. This was the first piece I ever painted with her help. I didn't know what I was doing. Now at home... I still don't really know what I'm doing, <laughs> but I paint. Whenever I'm feeling kind of blue, I pick up the paintbrush, some canvas, some paint, and I do something. I don't really let the blues get me down as much as before. And from that painting, I've transferred it to something else. I paint on fabric. So I took the symbol for lupus and I painted it on denim. And now we have a pair of earrings, combining my loves, painting and jewelry making. And I teach arts and crafts, so I taught this, the students at an elementary school. For Valentine's Day, we did um, some mugs. 
paint, paint on a mug. And we wrote, we wrote words on it. And mine says, I love you. So again, find something that you like to do. I've met a lot of people who crochet, um, who knit, people who do photography, makeup, whatever you like to do. Do it so that you don't become so drawn out and let lupus beat you up. I think about my grandfather a lot. And before he passed away, I was able to um, see him in 2008. It was the last conversation we had. He passed away in 2010. My grandfather lived in Jamaica. And when I went home to see him in 2008, I was so distraught because I had just lost my job. And he had... Um, Alzheimer's so he for him to remember me on the last day after being there seven days he took my hand and he said to me no make nobody mush you up or brook you down and for those of you who don't understand patwa what that means is like don't let nobody mash you up don't let nobody break you down so when lupus came my way and tried it I could still hear my grandfather telling me no make nobody mush you up or break you down and that applies to everything in life whether it's lupus or just life in general life is going to try you in every way possible but don't let it become your own hero find a support group find a therapist get up and move get some air in your lungs just go for a walk at a slow pace yes it hurts but just move and find a hobby, something that you love to do that make you smile, that makes your soul smile. It will make you feel better, I promise, because your mental and your physical health are connected. So until next time, remember to love on you. It's the last Thursday in February, the love month. And I actually cannot wait for March to come in because I am celebrating year number 38 in March. I'm so excited. And more importantly, it's Women's History Month, and I'll be speaking with, interviewing some awesome lupus warriors in March. So look out for that. Remember, as always, like, comment, and definitely subscribe. Love you. Until next time, please remember to love on you and smile. It will make you feel better.